What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the channel, Big Go Belt Media. And today we're going to be talking about a series that I feel has had a lot of momentum, maybe a lot of questions as well. Um, but with everything happening with the pandemic, I feel like it probably fizzled just a little bit. But nonetheless, I'm here to talk about the series Hailstrom, which is coming to Hulu as a Hulu original, um, premiering October 16th. Now, the reason why there's a lot of back and forth with this is uh, there's a lot of things, actually. I mean, one, we think about the news of it being announced, it being announced for Ghost Rider series, which I'm, known, I'm not even sure if that's even still happening. I mean, do Marvel still care about its, its television branch? Obviously not. Uh, but... You know, with, with that, and then, you know, news came out with San, at San Diego Comic-Con, and then additional uh, news is going to be coming out at New York Comic-Con. So, like, yes, people are still talking about it, but, like, the immediate reaction and response to this series, I don't feel like it's still there. I don't feel like a lot of people is truly excited for this or really, um, you know, really, really anticipating this as much as they were originally when the announcement was made. Now, when the trailer dropped, I did see a lot of people buzzing about it on social media. So that's probably a good sign there. Um, but nonetheless, I just feel like this, there's just not a lot of confidence coming from Marvel in the release of this. And, and to, be, to be quite frank, when you look at all the advertisement with it, it doesn't even... It, it, you don't even see the correlation of it being a Marvel property. It's not on any of the, the banners or anything. Um, any other promotion, you don't even get like the the Marvel title line with it, or it's just I don't know. It just feels like the black sheep of the Marvel bunch. But nonetheless, it is a Marvel property, and you know, kind of to kind of break this into put this into perspective, you know, it's it, it tells a standalone story that they said exists in the MCU would not cross over into the films or other television shows, but so they acknowledge it in that note, but just nothing with the branding and the advertisement. And like, quite frankly, we know like, you know, or if you don't know, this isn't like a Disney plus caliber type of show. This is more like a show that could have been on television, probably like a CW type of feel, but at the same time with the tone of it is definitely like a Hulu. So we, in case you don't know, Hulu is still um, under Mickey Mouse and the boys, uh, but it's just not quite a Disney plus um, it doesn't fit that that whole family oriented uh, slate of things like Disney Plus does. So per Hulu's perfect for it, and I hope you know they still do move forward with Ghost Rider. I really do not know what's the latest update with that, um, and I would like to see more of Marvel properties hit Hulu uh, that has this tone, that adult tone. You mean you you know what I'm talking about? Like the stuff we all fell in love with with Netflix, and you know now that that deal is. No more, you know, we kind of looking for well, where are we going to put shows like Punisher and, you know, where are we going to get another Daredevil? Where would it go? Because it clearly is not going to go on Disney Plus, but Hulu seems to be a destination. But anyway, with this series, though, so in case you're not familiar with the source material or anything, um, the synopsis of this is, is um, as the son and daughter of a mysterious and powerful serial killer, Hellstrom follows Damien and Anna. And their complicated dynamic as they track down the worst of humanity, each with their own attitude and skill. So uh, that's pretty much the premise of it. And I'm ready to get into episode one, Mother's Little Helpers. Now, this episode um, really lays down the foundation of what you can expect with this series. Again, it's 10 episodes. It's releasing October the 16th. Um, I actually do not know if they're all going to be released uh, immediately. But um, if they do, then, you know, well, I'm still here to break down each and every episode for you all. Um, not spoilers, so you definitely can enjoy it, but I'm definitely going to uh, get you prepared for the things you can expect for this. So in the, in, in the beginning and immediate start of this uh, episode, you know, you follow Damien Hillstrom, who is going to investigate um, a possessed little boy in Oregon. So Damien's in Oregon and, um, you know, when you're talking about the dynamics between him and his sister's personality, Damien is like really nonchalant. Um, he likes to help people. So there's good, even though he has this little carefree attitude as if he doesn't, um, he does really does care about people. Uh, but quite frankly, he's an asshole. Like I can't even put it no other way than that. And by day, he's a professor. And by night, he's, you know, he's helping with these strange cases of, uh, of, of, of random 
acts of uh, demonic uh, demonic acts and any of that sort. So, you know, not quite, he's not a priest, but, you know, he's acting as if so, if you get what I'm saying. And then you have Anna, who's just very twisted and vindictive. Quite frankly, she's reckless, who's in San Francisco. Now, she runs like an auctioning business where she pretty much stages these auctions to kind of really expose, like, criminals. And she handles it in her own way, shall I say. And with that being said, like, they're so totally different. Like, it's night and day between the two of them. And I like that because, um, you know, that's probably going to prove to show, like, their bond with each other, how opposites really can attract in the sense of like being cohesive with each other and much like brother sister dynamics like it's 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 there but like there's obviously more to that uh to that um but anyway with that being said uh you know when it when when it explains who damien is you know he's a guy who has unexplained abilities who might have inherited from a force of evil and so the church the vatican just do not trust him so they have somebody pretty much shadowing his moves um not only as a case study but to kind of like keep him under wraps because they don't want him just acting all out in a tangent and plus like again with them not really trusting him but he seems to be doing for the good and we just want to make sure they got him in close sight so uh but uh this there's some funny like there's some funny dialogue that happens from him. I don't even want to spoil it, but there's some funny dialogue from him. So like why he has this nonchalant attitude, he definitely has all the comebacks. He's this again, he's an asshole. So expect some good dialogue from him in this. Um and, and at the same time too, like you can almost consider him a little insensitive because he doesn't care what comes out of his mouth. So anyway, some so some events happen at St. Teresa uh, where their mom has been institutionalized there for over 20 years, which, you know, they will clearly explain to you why that all happened. And so, you know, when it comes down to that, Damien's obviously contacted and, you know, he realizes that he can't even help his mom. Now, this mom is possessed by a demon. That's why he's called here. And because of the reason her being um, institutionalized there, you know, they, they, they definitely view her as being pure evil here. But Damien realizes that he can't do this by himself. So he has to call his sister, Anna, who, you know, they haven't spoken in a while. They've had a really rough childhood. Uh, with a lot of trauma and evil, and pretty quite frankly, you know the the story between the two of them is kind of sad. But at the same time, they haven't spoken in years, and you know this was a call for him to reach out to her. Now again, I know he's an asshole, but he loves his sister. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> but like his sister's like times ten of him, so like she's not even for it. You know, initially she's just like, yeah, I, I don't care if he's contacting me. Uh, but again, that just shows you really the dynamic uh, between the two of them. But again, it explores the trauma that they went through as kids. And it kind of showed you how it manifested over time. And it really drew, drove the family apart. Because you have, again, you have the mom who's been in the two, institutionalized. You have the two siblings who are in separate cities who haven't seen each other in years. Who are kind of fighting uh, evil in their own way. And then you have their dad who's being branded as a serial killer. So there's a lot that's going on in this crazy family. We do not need a reunion. <laughs> that's all I would say. Um, but with that being said, in case it's not evidently clear, the tone of this story, uh, of, of this uh, series, is really demonic. There's a lot of supernatural stuff happening. There's some gore along. And there's some horror that will make you jump a little. I can't tell you. And then, like, the, the, the sound is really chilling. Um, and what I really like about this series is the really low light. Uh, cinematography and I think it just adds another layer of horror to it um, and it's really beautifully done there's this one scene I'll just tell you that there's this one scene with Anna and Damien me I absolutely love that shot it is absolutely beautiful um, but at the same time too that little low light really keeps that really mystique feel to it and it keeps like the viewers on their toes so like I really like how it's all done now going a now, talking about the mother, who is Vic, who is Victoria Hillstrom, who's played by Elizabeth Marvel, I would say that she is absolutely my most, um, who I'm the most interested in as far as character-wise. Uh, she gives me the heebie-jeebies, and I won't even lie, and I just really expect to see like her performance to truly, truly increase um, as we get deeper and deeper into the series. From what the little sprinkle and tease that we got of her so far, like I'm like, oh, 
yeah, when she's on screen, I, I'm watching because there's a lot that they that they're doing with this character. And again, I said you're possessed by possessed by a demon, so you can really expect like vocal changes and all that other good stuff, and you know, like demonic movements and all that. So like you you. you Elizabeth is killing it right now, shall I say, for just the sample that I have. But also, too, I think the characters are really working well together. I only spoke about three characters, and there's more, obviously, on this. And so far, I'm liking um, really how cohesive they're all moving together. And again, the the biggest and most important thing that I like to talk about uh, when it comes down to the new series is the first episode's the pilot. And if the pilot can invest you or, or even strike any form of interest then it did a good job so i say for this first episode of it being a pilot i'm i'm intrigued and i'm ready to get to episode two but yes let me know if you're interested in this series and obviously i won't even drag it along because we got nine more episodes to cover so stay tuned make sure you're subscribed with that notification bell and uh let me know in the comments what you think thank you for watching folks